In art, is a cat just a cat? A horse, just a horse. From antiquity to modern times, paintings of animals make up an important part of art history. And today, we'll be exploring a few animals that have captured the minds of artists from east to west. And our journey begins a few kilometers east of downtown Beijing's Sanlitun village. The Beijing Fine Art Academy houses a vast collection of artworks by Qi Bai Shi, one of China's most beloved and well-known artists of the 19th and 20th centuries. We are now standing at the old Beijing Fine Art Academy, which established in 1957. The Beijing Fine Art Academy owns over 2,000 pieces of Qi Bai Shi's work. And from all those paintings, you can see the special part of Qi Bai Shi is actually he paints all the little things in daily life. He paints insects next to a carrots. For example, like the peaches and all the fruits. Qi is known for his meticulous depiction of small insects. And today we get to see a few of his delicate insect paintings up close. This is the cricket that yes. people always talk about. Yeah, the one and only front-faced cricket. Even the Western art and Eastern art, they paint the cricket like the insects. You usually paint on the sideways. So look at the side, you can see all the details of the leg. But not many artists, especially Chinese artists, paint it like the front face of cricket. So it's like the cricket looking directly at you, like me looking directly at you right now. So the reason I chose this painting to show you and give you an idea is Qi Bai Shi never learned linear perspective like Da Vinci did. However, Qi Bai Shi himself knows about perspective. So when you see the details, you can tell all the perspectives are correct. From all the details, the legs, the connection, and you can even see the hairs on the leg. I wish I had a magnifying glasses because yeah, yeah. it's so finely painted. Every time this painting put out on exhibition, we put on a small equipment next to it, mm -hmm. so you can look at the details. I really want to give our viewer a perspective of how big this <laughs> um, cricket is. So yeah. if you compare it with my thumb, yeah. it's, it's very like tiny, yeah. right? Yeah. If you look closely, each part of his body, Qi Bai Shi actually left a little blank. So it's not like all the arms and legs are fully connected. In that way, you can feel the air breathing so that creates the feeling of the life of the insects. Especially if you look at the Qi Bai Shi's cricket and in comparison with the Western paintings, for example, like Baroque painting Yang Van Kessel, and he paint insects. If you compare with his insects into Qi Bai Shi's painting, you, you can tell the difference. For the Baroque painter, he's painting a specimen. Mm -hmm. So painting from a dead animal mm -hmm. is like um, for all the samples he have got to paint. Insects were often found in paintings of biblical scenes in Western art. They were deemed as symbols for the brevity of life. Sometimes, flies also appear in portraits. When it's there, it's an indication that the subject of the portrait had died. Now, starting in the 17th century, some artists extended their talent of painting insects and still lives into the realm of entomology, promoting insect sciences through illustrative art. Insects depicted in Chinese paintings, however, give off a different vibe. Butterflies, symbols of longevity and beauty. Bees, the sign of hard work. And in Qi's paintings, these tiny animals appear in a playful tone. I find this very interesting. The composition is horizontally spread out and you've got a lot of empty spaces over there. Yeah. The magic of the Chinese blank is to give you imagination. So the Chinese painter leave blank to let you think, to let you imagine what could 
probably happen. There are many possibilities you can, you know, imagine through this very tiny but long hand scroll. Shrimps and crabs were also Chi's favorite subjects. Using different shades of ink and swift and purposeful brushstrokes, Chi's arthropods are so lifelike that they seem to be swimming off the page. Even when they're cooked, they still look quite vigorous. He painted a few paintings at the same subject. The reason for that is because he loves crabs. <laughs> He's from the Hunan province, you know. People love the river crabs in that region. So, even though he moved to Beijing in his late life, he still miss, you know, the home hometown food. So he asked the maid every year to buy when the crab season comes to buy the crabs, so he can、um, take it back home and steam and eat. He already finished two.、Mm -hmm. I think he have another two left, or maybe finish one. You know, see the you, you can see the legs. So yeah, this is a very lively painting. Wang says, if we look at the crabs and lobsters depicted in Peter Class is still alive, it gives off a completely different vibe. Well, the cultural meaning is completely different, to be honest. You know, in in Chinese, we we don't have a still life. In Italian, it's called natura morta. Natura morta means dead nature. None of this looks fresh because. In 17s Dutch Golden Age, they have a very popular theme of painting called the Vanitas. The Vanitas is type of still life painting shows you know carries a lot of meaning of death. You know, for the Western still life, or we say natura morta, is always related with life and death. But for Chinese paintings, we we don't do that. I think the difference basically come from the philosophy and mainly from the religion. Paintings of insects or crustaceans may carry different symbolic meanings across cultures, but they tend to reflect the artist's interest in the natural world. Now, the next animal and art which we're going to explore plays a vital role in the history of mankind. So. Why have horses been such a popular subject in art? The most important revolution is actually the Maabei Revolution. Ah, because in the six thousand years ago, from the first humans to Maabei, then gradually the Maabei system was introduced, making it a means of transportation. The Maabei was a agricultural worker who became a strong worker. Originally, the relations between every tribe or every country, whether it was war or trade, if the Maabei did not participate, it was very difficult. 所以这实际上是一种革命，这种革命非常根深蒂固地影响到了每一个民族。European artists of the 18th and 19th century created many iconic equine images. Many of those paintings of stallions were revered for their anatomical precision and noble eloquence. Horses were also spotted in portraits, with the rider depicted as the hero leading his troops to victory. Now, Chinese artists, however, paid homage to horses in a different manner. They focused on likeness in spirit. I particularly like the painting of Song Dai. It has a picture of a horse with five legs. That picture depicts five kinds of horses. The picture looks a bit like the film we watched today. It is a picture of a horse with five legs. It is a picture of a horse with five legs. It is a picture of a horse with five legs. 这五匹马的形态呢，看上去好像差不多，但是它在这种简单的形态里面，通过这些马的表情啊，包括鬃毛的不同的形态呀、啊，还有包括这种躯干的这种细微的比例差别，来表现不同的品种。This fiery tempered steed is one of the most appealing horses in Chinese art. It's Emperor Xuanzong, the most powerful ruler of the Tang Dynasty's favorite charger. As an emblem of China's military strength, this large-scale composition featuring horses on a lush pasture showcases the glory and power of the Qing court. Now, the theme of groom and horse was used to denote the proper use of talent by Chinese literati painters. The reason for that was because expertise in judging fine horses has long been a metaphor in China for the ability to spot men of talent. 我举个例子，宋末元初的一个画家叫巩开
，他画过一幅马叫《瘦马图》，也叫《骏马图》。他是一改唐宋以来画马都比较健壮、比较勇猛、比较向上的一种状态。他画了一匹是低头垂目的，一头这个情绪比较低落的老马，很瘦。他其实表现的就是自己，因为当时他是由南宋入园的移民啊，国家。被外族入侵，那自己无可依靠，所以这匹马所表现的那种情绪是表现他自己。From horses and art, we now move on to another animal, a furry bean that has been stealing the show long before the age of the internet. For centuries, cats have captured the minds of artists, either as a main character or a supporting cast member. These little fur balls have been featured in many works of art. At the Yanhuang Art Museum, an ongoing exhibition is showing a selection of cat-themed paintings by the preeminent ink artists of the 20th century, Huang Zhou. Huang 先生这是写意画，写意画表达画家的一个性情，因为他很画很多大幅的作品。猫呢，更多是他小幅作为一种练笔呀、啊，或者一种即兴的一种绘画的一个需求。我们看到他那个猫还是很很像自然界的猫。尽管有自己的这种表达，他这个性格很豪气，我们更像说像一个舞画，所以画的比较厚实，比较洒脱豪爽。In ancient China, cats were often found in the homes of both rich and poor. They were pest controllers for the common folk and beloved companions for the nobility. Even most emperors had a soft spot for them. 朱瞻基他是比较，呃，我们讲跟徽宗一样，是在历史上以化名留在画室上的，呃，少有的几个皇帝之一，而且是画的也不错。你像他也画了好几幅就是猫的题材的作品。还有一个就是沈周，他一个就画的就是一个比较慵懒的团成一团的一个猫，但是嘛，猫的一个状态吧，眼神又很机灵的那种状态。Whether expressive in style or realistic looking, Chinese artists strive to render their cats as how they are in real life. But we look at Western art, some paintings, it may be like you said, it can change the cat's behavior in our normal logic, including some appearances. It's a Western artist's group. It's also a cat. Then that cat is individual. It's actually a cat in a bar with some cats drinking wine and drinking beer in such a situation. 这种处理上，我们中国的艺术很少去采用。是我们顶多就是一些情绪上的，不会改变他的一些行为。The motif of the cat carries special meanings in traditional Chinese art. In ancient China, cat paintings were popular gifts for the aged. 猫蝶图，这个是我们国画，尤其是像啊、呃、花鸟题材里面比较常见的一个既定的组合。因为猫蝶它引申为耄蝶嘛，其实就是高寿的老人的意思。包括猫也经常会跟啊、呃、像猴啊、跟牡丹呀、啊、这种题材去组合。If you ever come across another Chinese painting featuring cats, butterflies, and peonies, you know it's a painting that is carrying auspicious wishes for longevity and wealth. From tiny insects to adorable kittens and muscular horses, we've seen how artists in East and West feature animals in art. These paintings are evidence of our fascinations with nature. They document our relationships with animals, and they're embedded with cultural allegories. So back to our first question at the start of this investigation: Is a cat just a cat? Well, I hope you found your answer. Lin Lin, CGTN.